Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Kempnick, physicist with All True Health Systems. Here to talk about, give a presentation about the right exact synchrony feature and the Delta IV made by Scanados as the QA system with hexamotion that can be used to illustrate and prove that the treatment is being delivered to a moving patient. Sorry, I can't make it this recording scheduled blah 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 but it's such an important feature of upcoming treatment modalities that i agreed to give recording to present to you short 15 minutes so it'll be short not in detail in this motion <clears throat> but a good taste and <clears throat> give ideas that you can ask the accurate team or the scanados team uh, anything related to this functionality and right away, too, the background, each screen has a picture taken by me or friends in the area that's northern North Dakota and Minnesota. So you can see where it's like where I'm from. All right, so <clears throat> start the presentation, proving the future. This will be a presentation, as I said, about Scanados Delta IV Hex Emotion with the Accurate Rad Exact Synchrony. There are three modalities of the right exact synchrony that you can use one is omnistatic two that are respiratory one uses fiducials inside and one does not the one that doesn't just uses the ct number of the kv images that it takes at different locations around the uh, rotation as it goes around you can choose but that's details that the the right exact folks can talk to you about uh, i need to talk about that right now and X motion just moves and takes measurements like a patient. And I'm going to use the most difficult one, the third one, the respiratory without markers in this presentation that short. My name, Aaron Kempnick, here's who I am. Uh, disclaimer, first of all, the thoughts, ideas, processes, advice, etc., presented in this presentation are representative only to me, the author. The ideas laid out in the show are not necessarily that, of the All True Health System, Accurate, or Scanados. Sorry, it got put in there late. I only have 15 minutes, so I have to get onto the brass tacks to make things happen before they kick me off the stage. Right away, <clears throat> we're at a new age of treatment. Before, we had traditional Linux that delivered static plans. And they used different modalities, used plans via 2D, 3D plans, 3D plans. IMRT plans, ARC plans, with or without IGRT working, and that's what it was. That's what we have. That's what we always done. You can breathe, you can gate, stuff like that, but it's still a static plan that's not moving on a patient that potentially could be moving. So, historically, the immobilized patient was very happily represented by the static QA phantom that you had in the table that you used to check that the plan was good. The patient would like, you just restrain them more. You make them more immobile because the plan on the screen doesn't move as best as a patient doesn't move to get best results without error. But there's always issues. First one, what if the patient moved during treatment? Whatever ways. What if the organ that you're trying to avoid or move it moves. What if the target itself, which may be something different, moves among itself all the time or randomly without control? Or you had bowel movement for a prostate that can move dramatically and quick and fast and there's no trace in it. <clears throat> you put a margin onto it. That was a solution. And if it moved even more, you put more of a margin on it. And if that thing was potentially could move even more, you put a larger margin on it. It has consequences. Or say it's a volume you want to treat in the lung and it's moving, really moving. You apply ma maximum intensity projection. You treat that, make that your ITV. You had good confidence that if you treated all the area that the targeted PTV you're going after went in a simulation, when you made the plan, you're going to cross your fingers, hope 
that that doesn't ever move outside that, and then you can guarantee you're going to get it. But things move outside of a MIP because of a simulation, not treatment time. Variables are always at hand you can't deal with. <clears throat> so by making a MIP or a PTV, making more margin, 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 you treat more healthy tissues to treat the tumor. And that's what the synchrony system is trying to avoid. I want to deliver a dose just to the target volume that needs a radiation. And I want to reduce the dose that the healthy tissues get that don't need radiation. And that's what right exact accurate folks say the synchrony systems can do. I like to believe that. My system treats a lot, so I know it can do it. But you don't know it yet. I'm trying to prove it to you. So with the this presentation, I'll show you that I have proof and proof is given to the Delta IV system that Acre does what it says it can do. I say treating healthy tissues too much margin, you want to reduce margin, but that's not time for me to discuss that. Not here, I'm here to discuss. I'm here to discuss the future of DQA that we can use with this system. And it's a fact before, as I talked about, if we had a static plan, and we had a static patient, it'd be accurately represented. And then the results I got from the static plan to the static phantom was very sound and accurate measurements that I can present and plan off of or use. It's also fact, however, if I had a static plan, but the patient moved. Didn't move when I made the plan because it's a screen, but the patient in real life while getting treatment moves, even though they're told not to, for whatever reasons, I can also force the force on A is equal to force B, reverse it. I can say, well, how about I have a dynamic plan on a static phantom? Is that an idea? Either one, you can't get sound or accurate measurements from that. So there's a solution that we have that I'm presenting, and it involves the right exact system with the synchrony and the Delta IV with this hexa motion platform. On this one here, I have a 7D on there, which is an addition to add to it which helps you even further control or variable the parameters of uh, actual delivery. So you can make it most like a real patient. You can get as close to in pseudo measurements on a real patient that it moves inside with this. So I can deliver a dynamic plan to a dynamic target. Right exact says it can do it. The Hexamotion Delta IV says it can move like an actual patient and collect and evaluate dose data that was so far delivered. So I'm going to run some tests. I'm going to run some plans for you all, and we're going to see that I can do it. <clears throat> but let's go back and talk about the scan of those Delta IV with Hexamotion. What does it really do? Well, it's a simple idea, complex in the making, but it can move in all six degrees. X, Y, Z, roll, tilt, and uh, we can move like that, end time, end time. With the 7D, I can adjust the time even more so I can make the hexamotion move with time and then I can adjust it like real patient like a patient's gut LED lights that go on top of a patient's abdomen that the synchrony system uses with its AI to make breathing patterns model that it can follow so it can deliver dose where it's anticipated the target to be evaluate readjust continue I can adjust that so it's tweakly off like a patient who has COPD or a big belly breather patient that the motion of the abdomen need not always accurately represent the in live motion of the tumor. And with that, I can use that to test that the accurate system can deliver the dose to the tumor even though they're breathing like that. How do you get the range of the motion of the breathing pattern of a patient? In my case here, well, you can use a 4D CT, 10 phase, whatever phase you like, and you can observe the target as it moves as the patient breathes during the phase sessions. And you can take the extreme of the motion and the whatever axis you want and apply them and make a sine wave. See the spelling, I misspelled the wave, missed the V. You can use that to make a pattern, a wave like pattern that the Delta IV can follow the motion with hex motion can make it go up and down like a patient with its extremes. So you can test that the accurate system can push itself to the extreme motion 
that the patient's PTV, ITV, or whatever you're treating, tracking goes that it can deliver that without fail. However, I don't like that. I'm tough. I say, you know what? That's just too, too fantasy book, too Disney-like. It's not realistic. It's not representing the uncertainty of a patient's respiratory pattern. Because when you bring a patient in for a 40 CT or a CT, these are things you should talk to the accurate team about which are uh, best to plan off of. There's there's TV group being made up with that. I don't like making plans off of 40 CT because there's always error because the phase is not instantaneous. Two milliseconds, three milliseconds. It's a second. Not here to talk about that. I want to be like a real patient. And the patient, when they come in and they breathe during the simulation, I will bet $10 to one that the first day of the patient treatment, their breathing pattern will be that of a completely different person. It will seem than what you send. And I'll give you $20 to one. The second fraction won't be like the first fraction or the simulation fraction uh, session. And the third, fourth, fifth fraction, how many fractions you are for this, I will get you $50 to one that it won't be like. Every day the breathing is different. Being the patient is calm, patients reserved, the patient is excited, anxious. They have a lung tumor in this case, so of course they have trouble breathing. So they could be coughing a lot, can be whatever the issue is. The breathing pattern is always very different and you can have nothing that easily represents anything. So I need something that represents a patient, not a nice, simple, created sine wave that repeats itself because nothing repeats itself. So the scan of those team will give you a few real life patients they've distracted you can use. This one here is a smooth, normal patient breathing. And the extreme here is about a centimeter and some of motion of the target as it moves within there. So if the empty the uh, MIP the MIP you'd have to have a centimeter to account for that in case I want to do that at least as I can. So I want to use this breathing pattern perhaps. Easy beginner stage, a real patient calm dream patient this is perfect but then you get people like you say that perhaps are deep breathers bigger gut of people that move differently whatever COPD this one you can see the respiratory different is different the Z is moving a lot more that's the Z relative up and down so the abdomen movement is a Z you can see it's really going up and down they're really taking gas they're really moving because whatever the case patient is so this is a nice normal repetitive Taken from real patient from scan of those. Or then you give you this one here. This is from a nervous patient. Some patients come in, they're scared. I don't blame them a bit. So they breathe very erratically, really fast, hyperventilation like this. They cough, they breathe. Uh, okay, it works good here too. This is nice. You can repeat it and you can deliver the patient's treatment to the, to the phantom with this breathing taking place to evaluate will this plan be able to be delivered to a patient that breathes like this. Or then I'll resolve here. This one really moves in the X. This is kind of fun. I don't really know what this is from. I, You can use it for testing. Really try the limits. You can do this one. And now with those, it's nice. But I have a lot of my patients that don't breathe like that. I've had patients come back and they take three breaths and then I timed it. 38 seconds before they take the next three breaths and then 28 seconds. So it's really erratic and same. So because that wasn't yet representative from the plans you can get, and I don't want to make my own plan, I talked to the Agri folks, physicist Michael Taylor and the person decoding, Eric Breitbach. Thank you guys for this. I go, guys, with my scan, with my, my synchrony system, with the LEDs, you see the respiratory patterns of a patient. I go, I know the system uses it to always adjust its model to best fit the patient. It goes, can I extract that data? Can you guys extract that data for me? Put it in a format that I can take it and insert it into my Hexamotion platform and make my Scanados Phantom move like that patient. They said, sure thing. They got together and they have right here, this is one of the patients I had two weeks ago that it breathed and she breath it changed dramatically kind of erratic and that's what patients like and with this now they understand they're trying to come up with a tq way they can use as a function really simple and easy you can extract a difficult patient you had you want to use that data for testing you can take that back out and you can use it in the future 
press of the button, I guess. Talk to them. I don't know. It's for the future. Hopefully soon. It's a fantastic thing that looks really realistic. But the fact is, here's a patient that actually breathes. So I can use that. Proof is in the pudding. Time's running short, so I'll be running short. So I say I can do it on the synchrony side. I say I can test it on the scanner side. Let's try out, put it together. So I ran the plan six times, always adjusting parameters of the breathing. So kind of like a real patient that breathes different every day. We're going to do six fractions, but for fun, we'll do that. First one I had here, my gamma is 2%, 2 milliliter. This is a normal patient that we talked about here in the bottom, moving a centimeter and a half, it's moving around here, and it's not systematic repetitive. It changes, it's often. And with that, no 70 attached, so the time was not additionally adjusted. I got 99.3%. You can see the dots on the right show the dose on the plan, and then you see your gamma bar results on the left. And then I attach a 70 that component that I could adjust if I wanted the scale of the LED motion, like a patient's abdomen moving, really trying to get the air in the lungs at the time. But I wanted a good comparison having the 70 move just like it was on the no 70. And I expect to get similar results. And with there, I got 99.2 at 2%, 2 milliliter using the 70, so it's detached LED on a separate actuator system. It's where I expected. That's what I got. So I felt good about that. And then I used the 70 feature, and I adjusted it. I go, I go, make the time shift half a second different, like a patient's abdomen moving their, breathing from their guts. The tumor may not be moving synchronously with the gut as they breathe, like a patient at diaphragm would be. So I adjust that, and I adjust the scale a bit too. I said, they're moving their abdomen a lot more than the chest is moving, so the tumor target's not moving that much, so I adjusted that. what I get? I got 98.2%, 2%, 2 milliliter. Very acceptable. And then I brought it further. This is mine. I attached my 7th D to the Delta IV, so it's moving within a movement like a patient and I really made it move so that skill factor two times the person breathing significantly that really moving everything's moving and I put a time difference by 1.5 seconds I don't think this is push limit or a real patient would be because 1.5 seconds between the motion of the tumor and the tu in the lungs versus the abdomen I don't think it'd be that different but I gave it a try let's give it a whirl and with that, I got 92.1%, 3%, 3 milliliters. I increased the gamma a bit there, and the scale is 2, looks like there. And then I went back, and, oh, I attached, uh, sorry, that was, that was unattached. Then I attached on this one, so it's moving on the phantom while it's breathing, so it's like a real patient, most representative, I felt. And while it's moving a little bit in the X and the Y, in addition to the Z that I can control, I got... 96.1 at 3%, 3 millimeter. So the your parameters are, that's good results there. And then I brought it back down. I left it attached. I brought it back down to a realistic patient breathing. I thought not such extreme admin motion. That 0.5 seconds, 1.5 scale. And I got 96.8 at 2%, 2 millimeters. A very acceptable breathing pattern like real patient. Time is short, as I said, more details like this. So I'll make just that statement right here that the, my simple proclamation I made before that with independent verification data, here it is. The right exact synchrony system is a future and it can track and deliver treatment correctly of actual random patient breathing patterns that you can adjust. You can make any breathing pattern you want. You can throw at it and make it the most difficult form of treatment the no producials so no producials need to put in the patient lungs but the patient actually tracked the respiratory data and dose collected and evaluated by the independent not related scanner those delta 4 phantom and hex motion platform shows 
that what Accuray says it can do with its Red Exact synchrony system from the Infinite Source, it does it with great results, which is similar to a static plan on a static gantry. So it, it can't be better. And there's your proof. What, besides just proving that it works, the Delta IV, the Hexa, also allows ones to learn the limits of the synchrony system, perhaps. Not every patient is a subject for synchrony. Some breathing is terribly erratic. We had a patient near the diaphragm, and if they breathe with repetition, it can follow it, no problem. Significant distance, it can follow it. If they cough, they breathe, they pant, they cannot, and it's always changing, it's rough breathing. That was not the best patient possibly, and by using the Delta IV, putting that respiratory motion into it, you can test out yourself, and you can see that perhaps this patient is not best subject for the advanced synchrony treatments. We have to go back, despite the side effects of treating a larger area to get a ITV of a MIP, that may best fit that patient so they get the treatment they need. And only with that, you can find with that, that the Delta IV with text motion allows you to find that before the patient on the table getting treated and the side effects of not being able to do that. You got to make it through. <clears throat> so, small, let's get, finish up here. There's smart people right now at Scandalous and Acre that are constantly improving these systems. It's getting better and better. They are leading the path forward to the improved future of treatment delivery. I feel this way all treatment should be, and it's now trying to catch up to Acre for this great feature that nobody else delivers. I have my thanks out to folks at Scandados for helping me get the data and the system and learning. Acre team for many years, 16, 17 years of working with them for the great system they deliver, giving the best treatment ever available that can beat anybody anytime. I thank you for that. And the folks at the Sudo Consulting for helping me further develop, test, and come up with ideas that we can further drive these systems to the limits to make them even better. Any questions? I know this is recorded. I am on live right now. So when you fly your questions to me, I'll be able to reply to you right away, be it video or audio, I don't know. But regardless, fire with those questions and I'll answer the best I can. I apologize for having a short presentation. This is usually a good hour, hour and a half. I can talk your ears off about it. So next time you see me, ask and I'll talk away and just give me time. All right, guys. Thank you. Fire with the questions, please. Thank you.